And of course, my screen goes black. Haha. <laughs> hey there, everybody. How's the conference going? <laughs> Having a good time? So who here uses Firebase or has used Firebase? Nice, nice. How many of you use Angular Fire? Nice, got some good representation. So today I'm actually going to walk through some of the trials and tribulations I went through in our at next release, where we're actually doing a lot of stuff to support server-side rendering for you. So what I hope you get out of this talk is you know, some pointers, especially if you're a package author, um, and then getting to realize all the things that package authors do to abstract away these issues so you don't have to worry about it. So for those of you that don't know about Firebase, though, let me give you a recap on what we do. Cool logo. So there's three primary products in the Firebase suite. So Firebase is a suite of tools made by Google Cloud for mobile developers and mobile web developers. So the three that really help out to Angular developers are Firebase hosting. This is our static web hosting. You put your files up on there. It serves them. There's a CDN in front of it. Very performant. There's the real-time database. So the real-time database is a cloud JSON store. And the cool thing about it is you attach listeners to parts of the database. So whenever things change, all the connected clients get those updates in real time through a callback. So that works really well with the RxJS side of things. And then there's Firebase authentication. So you can authenticate your users, email password, phone auth, Google, GitHub, Facebook, all of that. And we've done all the work for you. So we built the client-side SDKs. You just hook it up. And you can authenticate your users. And that product is completely free. We've recently had two major additions. So Cloud Functions for Firebase. This came out before we spoke to you last year. Uh, Cloud Functions is our serverless compute. It attaches on events on all the other Firebase products. So when a new user is created, you can trip some Node.js code. When there's a write in your database, you can trip some Node.js code. So side effects as a service. We also recently introduced the Cloud Firestore beta. So Cloud Firestore is our next generation data store built on the concepts of the real-time database, but also using Cloud Spanner and massive horizontal scalability. Uh, think of it more like a traditional database in its guarantees that can just scale to infinity, so you don't have to worry about it. If you haven't checked out Cloud Firestore, and maybe you were burnt by the real-time database in the past, definitely check it out again. It's a very cool technology. But our most important launch, of course, is Swag. We have Firebase Socks now. So now, head to toe in Firebase swag. We have shoelaces, socks, t-shirts. Uh, we need some track pants and a jacket next. We'll be working on that. So I am one of the maintainers on Angular Fire. So what is Angular Fire? So we have the Firebase JS SDK. This is a framework agnostic SDK. It's JavaScript. It's based off of promises and callbacks. So we can do better in the Angular world. So we have Angular Fire 2. We're still working on the naming. Uh, where really what we've done is we built on top of the Firebase JS SDK. It has observables. It has an NGRX-friendly API now. It's zone JS aware, built on modules, so you can do some lazy loading, or only get the parts of the JS SDK that you need. And it also now supports dependency injection in some good spots. So basically, it's the Firebase JS SDK 
extended to work better for you, Angular developers. Now, if you've been following Angular Fire, uh, some of these bullet points are new, and that's because we just shipped them. So before I jump into the, the depths, Angular Universal. Everyone here knows what Angular Universal is, right? Yeah? So Angular Universal is server-side rendering for Angular. Um, the main benefits is you get better performance. The content's already on the page. It can be cached by CDNs, so super fast, especially in the Firebase world. Like, you can actually cache your contents behind a CDN. And then the real-time database or Firestore can then alter the page with those observable callbacks. It's optimized for SEO. And you can get site previews on things like Facebook and Twitter sharing. So when we added universal support or started to add universal support, our ideas were these four things. This is what we wanted to achieve, is you, the developer, would need no changes to your code. In the SDK, would have no conditional branching. So I wouldn't go, if it's the server, do this, else do this. If it's the browser, do this, else do that. Those are places where a lot of bugs can get introduced and changes in behavior. It should work out of the box. No fiddling with your Webpack configuration or anything like that. And like I touched on, no differences in behavior. It should same code, work the same, server and the client side. So last year, I was up on stage. I was an Angular noob. I'm still an Angular noob. You know, just work on a library, that's all. Um, so I came up here, and I told you, you know, in the next 6 to 12 months, what we wanted to achieve with Angular Fire. And one of them was universal support. And I'm kind of feeling this picture right now. You know, it's, it's only been one year, not eight years. But man, I identify with that. <laughs> so I'm going to walk you through some of the tribulations, the missteps that we had, and all the fun in three acts. Act one, packaging. Make sure that's in order. So your package, and of course, all of your upstream dependencies, should work with server-side rendering, right? It should be able to support Node on the server. Um, there shouldn't be those things that I touched on where behavior, if this, else. Lot, you want everything to act the same, regardless if it's on the browser or the server side. Um, for the server, any of the dependencies you need or any of the polyfills should be present. It should come with the package. It should be in the package JSON and defined. And optimally taken care of, and it shouldn't require you fiddle with your Webpack config to get things working. None of that was the case with anything. The Firebase JS SDK was in the middle of a packaging rewrite, and it was a big mess. You had to go into your Webpack config and say, entry point index.node, and generally a big mess. However, we filed some bugs on Bugganizer. Lots and lots of bugs. And those eventually got fixed. There was a packaging rewrite. So as those upstreams were fixed, things started getting better for us. Though today, we still have to pull in those polyfills, namely pulling in WebSocket and XML HTTP request. Um, there's some work going on eventually where the SDKs will handle that better and pull in things like fetch. So today, we now have this. And if you pull those in, you get part of the way towards server-side support. That brings me to the next, next act, which is window. So as you're aware, in the server, window doesn't exist. So once the packaging problems were taken care of, and I decided to give this problem another stab. I ran it, and just errors everywhere on the server. 
And then it turns out I got, this is kind of amped up here with the column number, but this is what I was seeing, is can't read property bleh of bleh on column 99,700-something. And what this was was actually some of the Google dependencies that Firestore and the other Google, uh, Firebase JS SDK dependencies were using were actually the NPM package came with it already minified. And it was minified. It didn't have source maps. It didn't have the source in there. So it's just minified JS. And that's what came with the node module. So package authors, please don't do that. It's pretty bad. Um, I'd go and to figure out what all of these were, error is everywhere. I would try to, you know, clean up the source code. I'd use Chrome Inspector to try to deobfuscate things and dent things pretty print it. And Chrome would just explode. Laptop fire shooting out. It didn't work well. So really gross thing here, but what I actually ended up doing was jumping into the node modules folder and then pretty printing through VS Code and finding the lines and the columns. And eventually, I came to the conclusion that all of these were obfuscated code that were referring to window dot. So, yeah, it's really gross. What did I do? Filed more issues. That's, that's my expression. That is how I was feeling after all of this. So eventually, these were fixed. This is how I felt as our upstream dependencies were all cleaned up, supported server-side rendering better. And I thought for sure that we were good. So at this point, we had the Firebase Summit. And I got a minimum viable server-side rendering project together. And I went up on stage and embarrassed myself. I had a live demo ready. Uh, everything was good. I gave everyone an RxJS rundown. It's going really swell. And then I asked the audience to participate and hit the application. What did I see? Timeouts, timeouts, timeouts everywhere. So embarrassed myself. It was actually great, because the YouTube video uh, that was where I was immortalized, the editors managed to snip out the last five minutes of me looking like a damn fool. <laughs> <laughs> that brings me to the final act of this, and the one that took a lot of learning and figuring out, not as many filing issues on Bugganizer, but just as much banging head on keyboard, which was I had to learn Zone.js. So this is what I was faced with. Uh, I decided to jump in and say, OK, what, what was going on? Why, were I, why was I getting these timeouts? And this is an actual depiction of the Firebase JS SDK's source code. <laughs> Timers everywhere. Just everywhere, timers, callbacks, uh, things that didn't have zone.js patches. And last year, I mentioned when I was up here on stage, I, was, I came from the Rails community, Ember before that. And I spoke about how I was very happy that Angular seemed to have less magic. Whoa, boy, was I wrong. So there was, there's a lot of magic there in zone.js. So Zone.js, uh, I'm sure everyone here has ran into stuff before. Um, at least in the universal context and service workers, Zone.js is a good way of telling when things are done and ready. Basically, it wraps all your concurrent things and lets you know if there's still tasks to be executed. And here, it's used to both tell when rendering's ready. So your page doesn't render until the application is stable. So that's what I was running into with the timer, is the application was ne never stabilizing because of all those timers. We knew something was up. We were getting a lot of Zone.js-related issues filed on GitHub. 
and we just never jumped in there. I was kind of burnt out at this point, but NG service worker came around, and that doesn't get registered until your application is stable. So then we were like, we have to deal with this. So how we approached this problem was using ng-zone, which is around zone.js, and we can say run outside of Angular. So what this is going to do is anything that starts here, the timers, anything like that, um, any of these callbacks, all of it will be outside of Angular zone. Angular won't care about it. Now, what you need to do, though, is you need zone for that change detection. So we go back and run it inside of Angular zone in our callback, and then put the next value on the emitter. We had to wrap pretty much everything in run outside of Angular. All of the Firebase JS SDK initialization, because that spins up timers with auth. Like I said, timers everywhere. So this got us pretty far, but things were rendering. The browser was working, the service worker was rendering, but something just fell off. So I looked at view source, turned off JavaScript, and lo and behold, this is my page. I had nulls and undefines everywhere. And as I mentioned, it wasn't zone.js patched. So what this actually was caused by was everything's a callback in Firebase. And I was doing everything outside of Angular. It's all async. So I need to tell Angular to not render the page until it's ready. So debugging this, I didn't find a great solution. This is kind of what I ended up with, which is just console logging it. It would be in my terminal. It would be in my browser console. I'd comment out code and see what fell out. And I needed someone to hold the door. <sighs> and of course, that fell on my misunderstood friend, Zone.js. So what I had to do was actually start a Zone macro task, um, and then subscribe to first, and then finish the task. And basically what that would do is it would make it so that Zone knew there were tasks that needed to be completed before the page could render. And there's probably cleaner ways to do this, uh, but this worked for me. And yeah, got it. It's rendering. So this is available on Angular Fire 2 at Next. Still working on the naming, but you can try it out. Um, this was a very big change. So those of you that are using Angular Fire, give this a try. Let us know if you run into anything. We had to fiddle around with the observables a bit. So we don't want any bad behavior. So give it a try. Now, the next question, state transfer. I haven't tackled that yet. Maybe, maybe I'll talk about that next year. <laughs> so in closing, uh, I'd like to say that Zone.js was, was misunderstood. I thought it was my enemy at first. But it ended up saving the day. Um, and I think eventually we can do better with this, and we can make tools to make debugging zone problems easier. We can do things to make it so you don't have to jump in and console log everything. And we'll see. So a couple shout outs. So this was a really, really great blog post on helping me understand what was going on in Zone.js. This is Angular in depth on Medium, Max K. And this was a really great post. He walked through everything. He kind of reverse engineered things. So if you're facing any Zone.js issues or realize that not knowing Zone.js is a limiter, check this out. And I also want to give a shout out to Jeff Delaney. He's a new Firebase GDE. And he makes this awesome series, Angular Firebase. A lot of his courses are up on YouTube. He has pro stuff as well. Check it out. 
I talked about some of the trials we had. He'll actually walk you through how to use uh, Angular Fire 2 to build a server-side rendered application. And I want to give a shout out to David East for being my rubber duck during all this. I sent him countless, endless streams of Hangouts messages while I was banging my head against the keyboard. And thank all of you for making this awesome community.